complain about her new purchase. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello, is this the Dynamo Motorcycle Company? Yes, it is. How can I help you? Well, I have an instruction manual here for your new electric motorcycle, but I'm not satisfied with the purchase at all. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but don't worry. I'm sure we can sort this out. Before we do anything, can you tell me the model number? Ah, at the top of the instruction manual here, it gives the model number R T Y three four. Uh, T Y three four. Okay. Now, what's the nature of your complaint? It's many things, actually. The biggest problem is that you say in your manual that the battery will take the motorcycle thirty kilometers. That's right. Well, it's lucky to take me eight. The battery is usually flat by then, often leaving me stuck at the side of the road. Are you sure you're charging it correctly? I'm fairly sure. I follow all the instructions and plug it in for a long time. And are you sure you charge it for the required three hours? I charge it until the charging light goes off, and that's two hours, so that should be enough. And there's a serious design fault with this motorcycle. When you're riding it, there's no meter to show you how much power is left, so you actually don't know when the machine is going to stop working. There's a voltage gauge. Yes, but that tells you nothing. The needle fluctuates about from fifty-five to forty-five, so whatever it says is meaningless. According to the manual, you're meant to charge the battery if the needle falls under fifty volts. But even when you charge it, it can go below forty-five. As I said, the needle just waves all over the place. The result is that I'm always worried that the bike will leave me stranded in the middle of nowhere. Well, I'm sorry about that. Sure, but what are you going to do about it? Unfortunately, we don't have a refund policy. But if you take the bike to one of our shops, our mechanics will look at it. Perhaps there's a problem that we can fix. The gauge, for example. The other problem is the battery. I actually weighed it, and it's almost six kilograms. Yet you say in your manual that it weighs only three. I can barely pick the thing up, so it's not three kilograms at all. Maybe you purchased the wrong model by mistake. I doubt that very much. Basically, I think I've been defrauded, and I'd like to know what you're going to do about it. All right, I'll put you through to our complaints department. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Hello. Complaints department here.、Uh, apparently, you have a complaint. Yes, I do. Let me tell you all about. It's it's all right. Our representative has already informed me about your problem. It's probably just a misunderstanding. I'm sure we can work something out. Right now, I need to take down some details. All right. Can I have your name, please? Jessie Parkinson. That's J E double S I E and Parkinson, P A R K I N S O N. Parkinson. All right. What shall we list this complaint under? Parts, service, or performance? Well, the meter isn't accurate at all, so that's parts, isn't it? Yes, perhaps, but you do feel more generally that the motorcycle doesn't meet the operational standards as advertised, so it's probably better to tick performance here. Can we tick both parts and performance? 
No, we can only tick one, so let's not call it parts. We'll go with performance. Now, we may post some further forms and questionnaires to you, so would you mind giving me your address? Certainly, it's 45 Melrose Road. Melrose, M-E-L and Rose. Okay, now, your phone number? Just use my mobile phone. That's 0928982453. Okay, and if we have any follow-up questions, what time is best for ringing you? Morning, afternoon, night time? Well, I work as a secretary from 9 to 5, but I do get a lunch break which gives me some free time. This break used to be 12.30 to 1.30, but then it changed to an hour later, so it's best to ring me at 2pm, since the break now starts at 1.30. All right. Uh, that's all for now. We just need to do our own investigation, and we'll probably ring you back tomorrow. I'm sure we can get to the bottom of this. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. Two. You are going to hear a talk given by an international student. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now listen to the tape and answer the questions. As an international student coming from Sierra Leone, it gives me great honor to give these opening remarks and welcome you all to Ashisi University, where excellence is the code. I believe I speak on behalf of my fellow colleagues when I say we feel that we are the most fortunate and privileged university students in Ghana. You may ask, what is the basis of such a conclusion? And I will simply say to you, in which other tertiary institution in Ghana do you find the same level of IT infrastructure and facilities available to students? Where also do you find such a low ratio of students to lecturers and computers? In which other educational institution do you find 55% of students on some sort of financial aid who in addition enjoy services and benefits such as job placement after graduation, on-campus employment that pays above the minimum wage, a supply of textbooks, and access to online databases. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no other institution of higher education in Ghana today that matches the learning environment and the quality of instruction at Ashisi. I could continue listing reasons why we students feel this way, but I only have five minutes for this speech. Believe me, I could go on for hours. At Ashisi, everyone is considered a leader and is treated special. Ashisi equips us with the necessary determination, strength, and belief in ourselves to be able to achieve our goals. We are being taught to think outside the box and to question and challenge our assumptions about the world we live in. This, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the benefits of a liberal arts education, which seeks to broaden our intellectual capacity. Now look at questions 17 to 20.
As the talk continues, answer questions 17 to 20. At Ashisi, we are also exposed to real-life situations and learn how to deal with them through a practical and vigorous academic program, as well as various seminars in which prominent leaders in their professions are invited as guests to interact and share their knowledge and experiences. Some people, even some of you in this audience, may believe that tuition at Ashisi is too high, but I say to you that the students here are unanimous in saying it is worth it. Not because we all come from well-to-do families, but because when it comes to one's education, you need to aim at getting the best from the right place. One's education defines who you are and what your perception of life and society will become. Ashisi offers us a top-quality education which meets high international standards. This is due to the strong linkages the school has established with three of the very best schools in the United States, namely Swarthmore College, which is ranked as the best liberal arts school in the U.S., UC Berkeley, and the University of Washington. In addition, Ashisi has recruited an excellent faculty consisting of lecturers from various countries, including Ghana, the U.K., and the United States. These lecturers are among the best in their respective academic fields. I believe this is the school's greatest asset, a strong and knowledgeable team dedicated to achieving successful results from their students and who also love their job. I would like to end with a personal message. My fellow students, because we are among the most privileged in our society, we should take responsibility for our own destinies, make our parents proud, and create a legacy for those that follow us and Africa as a whole. We must give back to our society after completing school and achieving our goals in life, which I believe we all can if we properly utilize our time and take advantage of all that is offered here at Ashisi. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a student union officer's speech. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Hi there. May I wish you a very warm welcome to Ealing College, and more especially to the Student Union. The Student Union is run by four sabbatical officers, of which I am one. As the President, I am charged with the overall day-to-day -day running of the Union itself, according to established policies within the Constitution. We also have a brilliant staff team who will help us and you'll meet them when you have five minutes to drop in and see us. The last year has seen the student union grow from incorporating a bar and a few offices with a small shop into being a thriving concern which controls, to its credit, two bars, a cafe bar or restaurant, a shop, a comprehensive welfare department and numerous offices. All this has been achieved by sheer hard work and dedication on the part of last year's sabbatical team and staff who overcame many obstacles and teething problems but won through in the end. This year, our aims as a team will be to consolidate on what has already been achieved and to secure the future of the Union. With the new post of Vice President Social and Communications, our main emphasis will be on communications within the College which has always proved a problem in the past, 
but one which we hope to improve upon this year. One way will be the regular publication of a student union magazine, so all you budding journalists come on down. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. We are very aware that a lot of you have never had any contact with student unions before and don't know what they are or what they can do for you. So basically, here's a quick rundown. If you have any problems at all, either when you start college or throughout your time here, don't hesitate to drop in in the SU office in the North Building and see Pat, our office assistant. She will be able to help you with most of your day-to-day -day general inquiries, or if she can't, she will direct you to one of our staff who can. Myself and the other three vice presidents are here every day, and if you need to see us, just fix a time with Pat, and we'll be only too happy to help you. By the way, queries or problems can range from a late grant check finding a place to live and academic matters, right through to the best places to eat, directions to the bar, or somebody blocking you in the car park. We'll give anything our best shot. Please remember, while you're at Ealing, that going to college is not just about education. Make sure you enjoy yourself as well, because believe me, time will fly once you're here. Ealing is a really good place to live, as there is lots to see and do. And don't forget, the metropolis of central London is only 20 minutes away by tube. Finally, the Student Union is an organisation run by students for students. So if there is anything you don't agree with, or you have any new ideas, please come along to the Union General Meetings, and don't be afraid to speak up. Or, you could give up a little of your time and stand for the Executive Committee which is made up of students who help us out with lots of interesting things. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the sabbaticals of the last two years who have worked so hard. My very special thanks goes to Winston, Martin and Peter and all the staff who not only did a great job but have been my good friends as well. Lots of luck and success for your year at Ealing. Work hard, but play hard as well. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You are going to hear a lecturer giving a talk on a type of fundraising for business called crowdfunding. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Good morning, everyone. 
Today, we're continuing our look at funding opportunities for small startup businesses. The emergence of social media has given companies the ability to connect with fans and potential customers directly. On the back of the growth in social media, a model of raising finance has emerged known as crowdfunding. This revolutionary way of raising finance began with micro-lending in the 90s. More recently, an equity-based model has emerged that allows people to invest directly in a new company. We're going to examine this in more detail later, but let's turn first to a third model, which I'll term a fan-based model. With this model of crowdfunding, individuals are encouraged to give an amount of money to support the launch of a project or initiative without the promise of any financial return. Instead, there's a reward for donating. This contrasts with the micro-lending model, which would require a return on investment, and the equity-based scheme, which may offer shares. Crowdfunding portals, or websites, allow the business concerned to present the initiative along with the financial target required. There's a fixed time limit for fundraising, and if the target amount is reached, all donations are paid to the company or individual. Whether it's an author planning to write a new book, an independent film company looking to make a new film, or a technology company with an idea for an app, the person or company needing funding would turn to its fan base for support. This is managed through one of the many crowdfunding online portals that have emerged. Of course, a fan or supporter of a particular initiative is likely to give money anyway. But donation-based crowdfunding will often make donating even more attractive by offering a rewards-based incentive scheme. Let's take a film company, for example, that needs funding for a new film. For a small, set donation, the donor might be offered a free ticket to the premiere or a DVD of the film. A larger set donation might be rewarded by the chance to attend a launch event when the film goes live. Those people who make bigger donations could even be offered the chance to meet the cast of the film, whilst the highest level donation could see the person's name mentioned in the film credits. For companies that already have a significant fan base, crowdfunding offers a fantastic opportunity to raise money quickly from a large number of people, each of whom donates just a small amount of money. Compare this to the time and effort that would be needed to sell your idea to investors or your bank manager, particularly in an age when raising finance can be difficult. The company may also have links with partner companies or organisations that run fundraising events. In this case, you can significantly increase participation by working with these organisations to promote your crowdfunding project. Another significant advantage is that you can reach out to your fan base for feedback on the project while it's being developed, thus making the final product more appealing. Crowdfunding enables you to raise awareness of the product at an early stage, thus increasing the potential for sales. With so many people behind you, it can also act as a great incentive to get the best possible product out on time and on budget. However, there are disadvantages to bear in mind. The model can be described as all or nothing. If you don't reach the monetary target required in the agreed time, all promises of donations are cancelled and no money is paid leaving you back at square one. Should this happen, or still worse, you receive the funding but are unable to come up with the product, not only will your fans end up disappointed, but the portal will record the fact that you failed to reach your target, or that the initiative failed. Fulfilling all the pledges that you've made to people can also be very time-consuming. For example, remembering to send out copies of books or free cinema tickets can sometimes be forgotten in the excitement and frenzy of launching your product. People sometimes forget to factor in the cost of rewards when calculating profit margins. But these can be significant. And finally, if you have a small fan base, for example, you're a new company or have a small social media footprint, raising awareness of your initiative will be challenging. These drawbacks aside, Donation-based crowdfunding is a wonderful opportunity for individuals, 
or small startups to raise funds for that exciting new project, whilst reaching out and connecting to the people who are most likely to support and promote your work for you. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.